Right, I am absolutely puzzled. I was so wrong for using cheaper parts. And good morning everyone. So we are here on the first job. It's actually our neighbor's uh, van, let's say. As you can see, I think he's got an injector problem, EGR of some sort, because look, that's quite bad. Let's just say and today we are using the uh, King Boland K7 that was sent to us it's very capable this one so let's have a look auto search it's okay we'll just do a quick system scan find out what's wrong with this oh, <laughs> right so we have just selected the data so we've got the cam and crank sensor performance issue on this one and it's also got the EGR position but EGR with that much smoke I don't think so but we'll see anyway oh, here we go. yeah that took ages yeah yeah cam and crank is good from the looks of it and you can also see the common rail right there fuel pressure is also okay let's have a look at the um, EGR position you have to close it just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, close that door, man. Yeah. The EGR is functioning as it should. Jesus. Look at this. Oh, that's soot. That's soot. That's soot. Don't inhale that. Uh, it's cold. You can see it coming down. Goodness, man. <laughs> All right, so this car has actually got a few things wrong about it. So the first one being obviously the injectors, as you saw earlier, leaking quite badly. We actually had it. We had the leak off tester out and it was just leaking like two mil like a second. It's not even a joke. But the reason why it's not starting or intermittently anyway, is because we found this on the camshaft sensor. As you can see right there someone's done someone tried to do a job on this so obviously it's not working anymore you can see there's corrosion so we just snipped it and uh, we're gonna be redoing the whole thing basically and do a proper job this time so yeah we'll just sort this out just bear with us right everyone that took us a little bit longer than usual because i did not have the right equipment so i had to borrow it from a garage i am definitely gonna invest myself some of this I have obviously the basic stuff that comes with the trim removal tool, but it's just different when it's branded, I reckon, you know? Don't use cheap parts, don't use cheap tools. It's the same thing, really. But yeah, this one's uh, Blue Point from a friend of ours. So yeah, thank you to him. But yeah, here's our repair anyway. Don't judge me just yet because we are gonna be covering this up. It's just, I wanted to see if, if the car is going to start properly. But as you can see here, there the little solder thing we've just placed it we've spliced new wires and we've also soldered it and now we're just going to cover up with some tape and some plastic on it as well just to keep it from yeah just to keep it from corrosion and also it from vibrating around so yeah look at that funny that tiny little thing can cause that much issue let's just say trauma right so that is the uh, voxel with varo done turned out that's why he's struggling to start the vehicle it's because the connector to the camshaft sensor was a little bit corroded and that's why whenever you turn it over it's probably vibrating like this and it's on and off on and off and then once it successfully starts then the vibration is a lot less on the engine let's just say that's probably why it continues to just start but yeah next job now we are going to be going to replace a brake pads and disc for a rear brake pads and disc on a Vauxhall insignia i believe so that's where we're going to go now good customer of ours he's been with us for about two three years now i believe so we're going to be replacing that and we're going to fit we're going to fit delphi on it or whatever they've got available with delphi or yeah as i was recording john interrupted me but yeah like what i'm saying we are now done with that Vauxhall vivaro just down there his camshaft sensor was well, well the connector for the camshaft sensor anyway you saw in the video there is a corrosion in it and that's causing it to basically intermittently 
start or have difficulty starting the car anyway as you know it's probably shaking around while it's trying to start and it will somewhat make some sort of connection and then it will start the vehicle but you saw the repair we've fixed it now we've actually covered it up with electrical tape and also what i put yeah, there's a plastic cover that surrounds it just to prevent it from getting touched again by the air box because it's just waddling around like this and i also secured it pinned it down on a uh, on the engine mount just to make sure that it, it's not wiggling around but yeah anyway rear pads in this for a Vauxhall insignia now so that's where we're gonna go so let's go to my supplier and here we are on the Vauxhall insignia job this one is a little bit weird we were here two years ago we replaced his rear pads and discs and from the looks of things he's only done 16,000 miles since we replaced the disc and the pads and you can see it's already it's already worn down obviously the pads are going to be wearing down if that's already got a scorching in it but the thing is this is what's weird about it have a look at this side this side doesn't have it and it's very meaty still on the pads it's making me think that the caliper has seized on this one which is weird but we're gonna have a look anyway we can only guess until everything is out so let's get to it find out it's gonna need a new caliper or not so we've got an electronic parking brake here so as you know we're using the Bolin k7 again to obviously undo the parking brake so we're just gonna do that go to epb it's really quick this thing recognizing what the car is parking brake control module e. Special function, there we go. Parking brake calibration, actuation, placement, shift transmission, yep. Start, there you go, and just like that, the parking brake is released. King Bowden here is actually decent, I can't lie to you. Used that this morning to diagnose the Vauxhall, uh, Vauxhall Vivaro, Renault traffic, whatever. The same thing. Anyway, we're gonna do this now. John, huh? look at it. Look, at what? look how the inside has got meat and then the outside doesn't. Hmm, interesting. Oh, that is tough. Oh, goodness me. interesting look at that how did that happen it's just completely gone the pads are sticking Hi, look at it that's what i would expect 16,000 miles caliper holder in place couldn't even bring it out this is good i know that i re-grease all these what the hell all right look at these guys look at these look at this look if i try to twist it you see what's happening to the rubber boot it wants to come with it so what i would usually do when that happens because look what i do is just to spray wd-40 i don't recommend this you have to clean this properly for when you're done make sure it's clean properly because obviously you don't want wd-40 on your brakes so let's get it winded back What brand did they use on this? Here we go guys. Yeah, no, I do remember using it. So again, low quality part, Bendix. It was me that used this. I'm gonna put my hands off on that. I wasn't really a fan. I, like some of you guys, some of you guys that said in the comment, yeah, I've used X, Y, and Z brand for a very long time now. Nothing goes wrong. Well, I tell you, this is why I changed my ways of just using good quality parts. It's because of this. 
It's Bendix. And as you know, Bendix is like an Asian brand, I believe, and not really good because the tolerances on these lobes, as I mentioned before, they're not good. So they can get stuck in place. So where's the, uh, where's the other pad? I can show it to you on this. Look, can you see where it's silvering there? And there, it's, it's, it's gone bad, let's just say. It's trying to squeeze itself in to the runners itself. So that's my bad, isn't it? That's my bad. I was so wrong for using cheaper parts. I mean, look at this. This is what happens. Ah, yeah, so please believe me, don't use cheap parts. Mainly if you're in trade, don't use cheap parts unless they give it to you. Unless the customer gives it to you, don't use it. It's just not good. And that's why I've stopped using cheap parts. And here's another thing. That's why I tried to relearn everything that I knew about brakes. Let's just say I use copper grease on this. And the, as you can see, the remnants are there. Look. Like what I said, the grease will eventually run out. And then the copper itself will actually cause the brake pads to seize on the sliders uh, yet again that's another proof stop using what's not meant to be used okay look you can see about there just about see it. the copper grease remnants there the grease is gone but the copper is still there hey yeah yeah is that enough proof yet again not to to just follow instructions follow new technology let's just say follow new findings ah yeah 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 as you can see right here again that's the same coating that is the same coating that i'm talking about all right yeah let's not use bad parts again let's not make the same mistake sure that we put this in not copper grease i don't mm. hate copper grease you just have to use it in the right application right check this out yeah but this is how it should be happy days i'm not racist i just told you i got black and white tv mate <laughs> <laughs> all right Hello. cool man that's a pass for me right look at that that is two years old pads should never look like this at two years old it's falling apart and as you know that's the difference between cheap and not cheap look at this and look at that so guys please don't make the same mistake that i did don't use cheap parts but your brakes depending on how much you use it this guy's only done sixteen thousand miles in two years sixteen thousand miles in two years it's it's nothing absolutely nothing so yeah use a good part so that is us all done now so we use our brand of course on this what we're going to do next is to the activate no activate rather the electronic parking brake there we go star oh no it wouldn't be brake cable service release okay oh well, here we go not the parking brake again parking brake control module there you go special function actuation that's okay supply there you go there you have it exit we have to calibrate it first you just have to make sure that you do that you can see that look failed and it's calibrating right now I don't know if you can hear the wearing noise in the back but it's doing its thing so we'll leave it alone for now there you go it's passed now what we gotta do is activate the parking brake press on the brakes that's it boom happy days you always have to do that after you've changed the brake pads or br brake pads and disc on a voxel insignia or any voxel really that's got electronic parking brake you do that look you can see special function then park brake calibration yeah that's us done on that one let's go hi yeah yeah wondering if i'm going to pick up another job or not cool right uh we're gonna go and pick up a job i believe we've got uh an audi a4 to do today it was an optional one i was wondering if i should do it or not but yeah he's a subscriber of ours um we're gonna have a look and see 
if it's available now if he is then we'll go there if not early time for us what time is it two o'clock so we're gonna go home after this so yeah catch you guys on the audi a4 once we confirm with the customer hello everyone so we did finally got to this job which is a uh, a job for a subscriber of ours as well he watches our video um his car basically presents an intermittent fault of the blower fan so let's have a look um we have tried it earlier it was working now it absolutely isn't oh now it's working again it's working again Earlier it wasn't. Just so odd. That's so odd. Let's uh, try and lock and lock again. Right, so we've just waited about 30 seconds. So now we're gonna see. It's still working. That's so odd. That's very odd. Change the position of the uh, seats earlier. Put on auto. Still working. working. Still working. I don't even think that that is the fan at all. Electrical issue. Yeah. Right, it's blowing again. Right. I am absolutely puzzled. It happened and then it completely stopped. The thing is, I can't even test anything if it's working because if it's working, then that means all of the electrical stuff is doing okay. We can try and probe it, but it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna show me good voltages and stuff. If you guys have any clue, let me know in the comment section below. It's literally just happened once. And uh, when I tried to do it again, it didn't happen. Right, let's see if we get lucky with this. Camera's rolling, we'll see. Yeah, it's working. It's on. Yeah, that's just, I'm really puzzled. If we test the fan, it would show that it's okay. If we test, obviously, the resistors and stuff like that, that would show off fine as well because it does work. Interesting. Intermittent. Yeah, it's very intermittent because I don't want to be replacing stuff and it's not even it. Imagine we replace this, he pays for it and it's still doing the same thing, then that's not really a fix, is it? I don't really like going back to customer's house for the same issue, you know? It just doesn't make sense. Right, so I'm just here checking the blower motor here. Wiring is okay, but obviously, I, like what I said, if I probe it, if I, even if I probe it, it's pointless because it's getting power. He's getting the commands from the uh, control unit because really, this is just power and some resistors. That's all it is really for when you change the speed and stuff. And if that's all working, then it's working. I don't want to change the blower motor and it's not the blower motor. I don't want to do that. That's the last thing that I want to do. Ah. That's... Go on, John. Turn it on. Even if you wiggle it around, look, it's working fine. So odd. Yeah, let me know guys if you have any idea because I am very confused right now. But yeah, if you if you guys know anything, please let me know. We'll come back to this job and uh, have a look. Yeah, that is that. That is where I'm going to end this video now. Customer will be in touch again for when it does actually fail because I have no clue. I'm stumped. If you guys have any idea, do let me know what it might be. Um, he said he just started kicking the, the under the glove box and it worked fine. I'm assuming it's a loose connection. It probably came off. Who knows? We can only really find out. But yeah, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. And we will see you on the next one. Peace.